Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. This one is Dr. Terry Simpson again, an arrogant clown who thinks himself remotely competent to speak upon things like heart disease, statin medication, and the side effects and the, w the way in which patients actually withstand those, even though he's a physician. Just because he's a physician, actually. May I remind you before we even continue this video, remind you, the viewer, but also Dr. Terry Simpson himself. A physician is someone that is typically trained in two things, pharmacology and symptomology. They're basically trained to assess the presentations of a patient and then refer them and prescribe them the associated medications that they were taught to prescribe them as a consequence of exhibiting those presentations. That is what physicians are taught. So let's look at what he has to say about the carnivore diet in this one. 23 second clip, I'll probably find a way to turn it into 15 minutes, but okay, let's go ahead and do this. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule Company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. This man wondered why he had to have heart surgery after living a carnivore lifestyle and clearly being in great shape. How long was he living the carnivore lifestyle, Dr. Terry Simpson? Because I'll tell you what, I know what you're going to insinuate and imply here. We can tell by your pretentious attitude here, your haughty, pompous attitude, arrogant attitude and demeanor. Because let me tell you something, heart disease takes decades to develop, at the very least years. But typically decades. So once again, Dr. Simpson, how long was Michael Riley here, or Michael Riley, living a carnivorous lifestyle? I would even think that you would know just basic facts, like heart disease takes a long time to develop. It is a very insidious etiology. So, but clearly you don't know that either. You don't develop heart disease in six months or a year. It's very similar as well to the phenomenon of inertia with regards to the CAC score and the CAC test, you could say, where when one adopts a carnivorous diet, which is the species appropriate species specific diet for human beings as established by carbon and nitrogen stable isotope testing done in 2019, binge my channel further for more information on that, or buy my book when it's out, contraindicated, what can happen is after adopting that diet for years, their CAC score can actually go up markedly because there is once again an inertial effect when it comes to CAC scores and the presentation of calcium within arteries. By the way, funny that we measure calcium in arteries to measure the propensity or the proclivity for the body to actually develop atherosclerosis because cholesterol consists of one-tenth of one percent of atherosclerotic plaque, or rather atherosclerotic plaque consists of one-tenth of one percent cholesterol, and it's largely composed of scar tissue that can become calcified at later stages, then causing thrombi, also known as blood clots, because cholesterol doesn't cause heart disease. Anyway, just funny how we measure calcium and not cholesterol on those tests, and the CAC score happens to be a more efficacious method of assessing the probability of one developing heart disease later in life. Well, after his heart surgery, he changed his diet and is now taking a statin. Well, that's a mistake. I do not denigrate this man for doing that because fear is a very powerful emotion and a completely justified emotion to exhibit after having a heart attack and having to have heart surgery. I do not denigrate him for that, but I will say that that is a mistake. Statins are absolute mitochondrial poisons. I covered this in the last video I did on you, Dr. Terry Simpson. Statins are mitochondrial poisons. They downregulate markedly the production of CoQ enzymes within the mitochondria, particularly the electron transport chain. When the electron transport chain fails, the mitochondrion dies and the entire cell disintegrates. Mitochondrial dysfunction and chronic systemic inflammation typically go hand in hand, but those two, if they don't go hand in hand, are still the underpinning etiology and causes of every major killer in the United States and the Western world, including heart disease, Parkinsonian types diseases, dementia, and Alzheimer's. So, also not to mention that 20%, one in five statin users cannot withstand the side effects of statins, which is astonishing considering the fact that they would be more inclined to take statins and still withstand those symptoms if they believed it would help them live longer. And in fact, in the other video I did on you, Dr. Terry Simpson, I covered this as well, that this raises the query, the question, how much longer do people that are taking statins actually gain life? How much longer do they live? Which was assessed by taking all of the available studies and aggregating all 11 studies, aggregating all of the data that's found within them, which resulted in data from 90 
90,000 patients, which showed that people with a history of heart disease, or rather that had had a heart attack previously, gained a median of 4.1 days of life, and people without a history of heart disease or having a heart attack previously in their life gained a median of 3.2 days, which is completely negligible and insignificant, not to mention the fact that statins, like I said, destroy your mitochondria. You would know that if you did a lick of basic reviewing and studying, by the way, instead of being obsequious to your mainstream institutions or institution that you learned your information from, your mis and disinformation from, actually, the bought and paid for information primarily from the mainstream medical establishment and pharmaceutical corporation. Wow. Average MD here. If you're in this space, you're most definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water, so I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below. Why? Because he said getting his chest cracked made him realize that he needed to listen to people who were smarter than he was. You arrogant, insolent, haughty, pompous <laughs> You pretentious <laughs> I'm I'm serious. You guys make me very verklempt in the worst way possible. Very choleric because of your irresponsibility and your misanthropy, actually, in many cases. You know, a lot of these TikTok influencers are bought and paid for, especially dietitians. This guy probably is as well. I know that's very cynical of me, but we live in a time that breeds cynicism. If you're not cynical at all, you'll die very prematurely. If you don't have any cynicism at all and you're overly forgiving, you're going to die very prematurely. So just a fair warning for the overly optimistic people. And maybe not listen to the carnivore crowd. Well, the carnivore crowd is the crowd that you should most likely listen to. It doesn't mean that every single person within that crowd is of veracity. It doesn't mean that every single person within that crowd exhibits the same level of perspicacity as other people do with regard to human nutrition and biochemical principles. But it's the best crowd that you're going to find with regard to health information. Because once again, the carnivorous diet, the carnivore diet that is properly tenured and properly fortified that consists of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals primarily, grass-fed if you either, one, prefer it, and two, and or two, can afford it, with fat of the indicated type and kind as desired in the form of saturated fat, that's the indicated kind, straight hydrocarbon chains, biochemically speaking, butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, added salt and water. That is the species appropriate species specific diet for human beings that was established unequivocally and unambiguously in 2019 with stable nitrogen and carbon isotope analyses done on the collagen of long bones of ancient human remains, which showed once again unequivocally that human beings had higher carnivore ratings than that of other carnivores at the time, those including four primarily, which is lions, wolves, hyenas, and foxes. Anyway, that's Dr. Terry Simpson annihilated and eviscerated once again. I don't like him. He's a perfect example of people that have an astonishing level and exhibition of arrogance and haughtiness, pompousness, this complacency. It's ridiculous. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, comment your thoughts below, please, in the comment section. Subscribe to the Patreon for ad-free content, access to any pop-ups on the screen without any blur, and depending on the length of the type of video I am recording, extended cuts of the versions of those videos as well. And if you didn't know, I mentioned it in this video, I believe, I have a book coming out this year. It's called Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. There is no set release date yet, but it will be this year, and eventually I will get a set release date, but right now, be, be patient. But I encourage you, please buy that book, whether you buy the audiobook version, which I have recorded myself, might come out later than the actual physical copy of the book, or if you buy the ebook, it doesn't matter. As long as you get the book, because the entire purpose of this channel is to inform people in a truly beneficent, charitable way. This is not a sort of rapacious attempt to make people penurious by gouging them for money. That's not what I'm doing. So please buy it because then you'll have all the knowledge up in your head. With that being said, I will see you in the next video when we critique someone else, hopefully not Terry Simpson, because honestly, all of his content is vapid and jejun nonsense, and it's just not really entertaining, honestly, as a result. But perhaps maybe some more Terry Simpson. Who knows? But anyway, till then.